Something my grandma used to say, and many other grandmas, was if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. Sure, I'm glad my grandma never went online. People on here just don't listen to their grandmas, do they? Well, this video is for the grandmas, as we're going to be focusing on the positive, talking about the greatest strengths of every console. Although, we may be skipping a few of them. Hey, it's like my grandma used to say. In any case, I'm going to be saying something nice about every console I have something nice to say about, which is still pretty comprehensive and covers most of the consoles that people care about. Keep in mind that determining a console's greatest strength is highly interpretive, not to mention debatable, so be prepared to disagree and share your own opinions. Not that people need to be told to do that. Also, I'm going to leave out computers, so anything with a keyboard, and I'm going to save handhelds for their very own video. Now, maybe that's got you thinking, hey, this isn't every console, but let's be honest, not many people are watching to hear what the greatest strength of the Acorn Archimedes is anyways. It's gotta be its name though, right? Plus, we've still got a lot to get to. The Magnavox Odyssey, greatest strength existing. Hey, something had to be the first commercial home game console. The Fairchild Channel F, interchangeable cartridges, the first to do it. Atari 2600, being the go-to console for game developers of the time, which resulted in having ports of pretty much all the most popular arcade games back then, not to mention plenty of original titles as well. Intellivision had some nice arcade ports, ColecoVision had even better arcade ports that were impressive for the time, and dare I say it still to this day. The Atari 5200 had lots of Atari 2600 games, but better versions of them. The SG-1000, it was Sega's first home game console. Nobody really plays it anymore, but if you own one, you can hold it up and say, hey, this is Sega's first game console. I don't have one to do that with, but I can dream. The Nintendo Entertainment System, having a large majority of the most iconic 8-bit games, coming not only from Nintendo, but many other recognizable developers as well. Sega Master System, being an 8-bit console that was in many ways more powerful than the NES. And it's also the most requested system for me to cover that I haven't talked about yet. Don't worry folks, it's coming. Atari 7800, backwards compatibility. Okay, and I know I said no computers, but I have to mention the Sharp 68000 because it's just so cool. Its greatest strength was having hardware similar to arcade machines of the time. It even served as a development tool for Capcom's Play System arcade games. The TurboGrafx-16, known as the PC Engine in Japan, its greatest strength was shoot-em-ups, plain and simple. It's a fantastic console for fans of the genre, and same goes for the CD games too. The greatest strength of the Sega Genesis would be, in my opinion, its fast processor that catered well to many of the action-centric and faster-paced games that the system was known for. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, no, this was not blast processing. I'm just talking about the processing speed of the console's main CPU. Blast processing is something different that actually was real, but wasn't really ever used because it was difficult for developers to actually utilize properly. The Neo Geo literally being an arcade machine. Super Nintendo, the eject button, who wants to fight me over it? But yeah, the Super Nintendo is interesting because a lot of people would be tempted to just say RPGs right away, and perhaps that could be the answer, but in any case, I feel it's important to remember that just because something could be a console's greatest strength 
doesn't make it a console's only strength. I mean, just because my bread bag clips are the greatest part of my collection doesn't mean I don't have other cool stuff too. Check out my lineup of video game screwdrivers. All that said, I feel like the Super Nintendo's greatest strength is the amount of games it has that are frequently mentioned as people's favorite game of all time. Sure, every console has games like this, but the frequency at which I hear people say a certain Super Nintendo game is their all-time favorite cannot be ignored. I mean, my gosh, the number of times I've heard people say to me, A Link to the Past is my favorite game ever. Chrono Trigger is my favorite game ever. You're a red-haired doofus. Wait, scratch that one. It's unrelated. Super Metroid is my favorite game ever. Super Mario World is my favorite game ever. Earthbound is my favorite game ever. Having so many games that people consider to be at the top of the pantheon of video games will always seem like the console's biggest flex to me. The Philips CDI, great for memes? Next up, let's get a little weird, the Sega CD. Is it a console or an add-on? Well, just in case you do consider it a console, I'd say its greatest strength is ironically the games that are not FMV games what the console is known for by many, and yes, I know there are fans of the FMV games that enjoy the cheesiness, but what the Sega CD gets the most respect for these days are the games that used the Sega CD hardware to make games that more closely resembled Genesis games with the added benefit of CD quality soundtracks. The FM Towns Marty had some great ports of well-regarded arcade games, including some that weren't ported to much else. The Panasonic 3DO, it had higher quality video than the Sega CD, for fans of FMV games, the Atari Jaguar. It has some good versions of popular games, including NBA Jam, Raiden, and Rayman. Can these games be played on different consoles instead? Yep, and most people do, but if you want to play it on the Jaguar, there are some decent versions available. The Sega 32X, a key component in the Sega Tower of Power. The Sega Saturn. Now, this is a close one in my opinion between the unique Sega developed games and the amazing lineup of 2D games. And yeah, I think I'd have to give it to the system's prowess when it comes to 2D games, especially when you factor in the extra RAM you could add into the cartridge slot that made the hardware even more capable, the PlayStation 1. And for this console, I actually will say the RPGs, not only because there were a lot of good ones, but also because a lot of them really tried to push the genre forward in unique ways. But let's not kid ourselves, this doesn't mean the PS1 didn't have a crazy amount of other good games as well. The Virtual Boy, yeah, some might call it a portable system, but in any case, its greatest strength is probably being a conversation piece. Yeah, there are people who enjoy it, but even more than that, people love to own it for ironic reasons, talk about it, and joke about it. The Nintendo 64, definitely the console's emphasis on four-player local multiplayer. It has some truly great ones, and it was also the first console that had four controller ports all ready to go without the need to buy any additional accessories. You ever leave a Nintendo 64 alone with a TurboGrafx-16? Things get awkward real fast. The Sega Dreamcast, whoa, 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 what was all that no keyboard talk? Some might want to say the console's ability to do arcade ports so accurately, and I totally get that, but I would say the console's variety of unique Sega games, some of which are arcade games, takes the cake. Remember, this was at a time when Sega had a lot of its talent split up into different teams and more or less gave all of them the green light to come up with unique games. If you're looking for a wacky lineup of video games, it doesn't get much wackier than the Dreamcast. The pride of my collection, the Samba de Amigo Maracas. Next up, the PlayStation 2. And I tell you what, for a console as dominant as the PlayStation 2 was, it can be hard to narrow it down to a single greatest strength. What was Michael Jordan's greatest strength? Playing basketball. What was the PS2's greatest strength? playing video games. And again, not that it isn't great at doing other things too, but I would say the console's overwhelming third-party support 
is its greatest strength. Because while sure, Sony made some good games for it themselves, the third-party support is really what provided the system with such an extensive lineup of good games. And yeah, you could probably say the same thing about the PlayStation 1, but I just feel the RPG library on the PS1 was so overwhelmingly impressive, it had to be considered its greatest strength. Next up, Microsoft's Xbox. Greatest strength would probably be the strength of its hardware. I mean, for something this size, you would hope so. Having what many consider to be the best versions of most of the multi-plat games from that generation, this seems to be the system's main calling card these days. The Nintendo GameCube. Greatest strength would be having some of the most unique iterations of many long-standing Nintendo IPs. A big part of why I feel this console has made such a popularity comeback in more recent years. And while sure, some of them are just straight up bangers like Mario Golf here, a lot of these games were considered to be black sheep Nintendo games that were too different from what fans were expecting at the time, which has allowed them to stick out over time and age beautifully, as people are more willing to approach them with an open mind. Next up, the Xbox 360. I would say Xbox Live because even though the original Xbox might be more important for introducing it, Xbox Live was a huge draw for Xbox 360 as online console gaming exploded in popularity. The PS3 greatest strength would be having a good amount of exclusive games compared to its main competition, the Xbox 360, at least at the time it did. The Nintendo Wii, even though there are a lot of people who hate it looking back at it now, I'd still have to say it's the motion controls. Motion controls have never been anywhere near as popular as they were with the Nintendo Wii, and it will always be the console's defining feature. Next up, the Wii U. Greatest strength being sneaky. This thing is mad sneaky. So sneaky, in fact, that it came and went without a lot of people ever knowing it even existed. Okay, but serious answer. I'd say its greatest strength is being the first Nintendo console with HD visuals. Finally seeing Nintendo games in HD was a pretty big deal for many Nintendo fans. I'm telling you, of the people who did own a Wii U, a lot of them enjoyed the heck out of them. Just think, they were playing games like Super Mario 3D World and Mario Kart 8 way back in the early 2010s. Next up, the PlayStation 4, not scaring away people with the possibility of DRM. Might sound simple, but I'm telling you, this was a huge deal at the time. People were really angry about the Xbox One being announced with unappealing DRM features. And the little clip of Sony making fun of them by showing how to let a friend borrow a game is what I would argue basically won that generation for Sony. Pretty accurate too. I make that face when I get a new game too. Xbox One's greatest strength, I would say the backwards compatibility. Really well done by giving you the option of popping in your old game discs, going back all the way to the original Xbox for some games, and often including patches that would improve the game's resolution and frame rate. The Nintendo Switch, being able to switch between playing on the TV and playing in handheld mode. I mean, no other console could do this before. The Switch deserves all the credit for this one. But yeah, while it could be argued that other systems had a similar feature, no console did it quite as elegantly as the Switch. It's what the system really tried to sell itself on from the start and sell itself it did, becoming a massive hit. The PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles, they haven't been around long enough, but maybe you could say their greatest strength is being aggressively unavailable for the first two years of their lifespans so that anybody who has one can feel really special about it. It. I remember when I got my PS5, I showed all my friends and they were blown away. Okay, but that does it for all the consoles I can say something about up to this point. If you have a different opinion on what a particular console's greatest strength is, I would of course love to hear your perspective, which you can do without trashing my opinion or else my grandma will come wash your mouth out with soap. 
And my grandma has unfortunately passed away, so that should really scare you. But with that, leave your thoughts along with anything else you'd like to say down below, and I will see you in the next video.